Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Justin here, and we are currently on freecodecamp.org. So, if you want to follow along, please come visit this site. And the one that we are doing today is under the coding interview prep section. And within that, under the algorithm section, and the one we are doing is a second one called inventory update. So let's click this and let's see what this is all about. Let me read the directions for us. Compare and update the inventory stored in the 2D array against the second 2D array of a fresh delivery. Update the current existing inventory item quantities in array one. If an item cannot be found, add a new item and quantity into the inventory array. The returned inventory array should be in alphabetical order by item. Okay, so the directions are kind of confusing, but if you look at some of the examples that's shown right here, it's not, it's pretty simple. Pretty much add up these two, where for example, you see a hairpin, one of hairpin here, a two of hairpin here, then the resulting array, you should see a three comma hairpin, right? So it's, it's fairly simple. Again, I always say this, please, if you have not attempted to try this uh, algorithm out, please pause the video now, try it on your own, and then come back to my video to see the way that I saw this. Okay, so this one is fairly straightforward. Let me bring this code over here. And uh, I'm just gonna erase everything inside the update inventory. So let's start from the beginning. Okay, so uh, our array one and array two is this nasty array of an array, a two-dimensional array. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate working with a two-dimensional array like this. I would much rather prefer to work with, for example, check this out right here. I would much rather work with an object that has the bowling ball, the names of the inventory as the keys and the value as the, um, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? As the value, the value as the value. I just had a little bit of brain fart there. Sorry about that. And so this is what I want to convert our array to kind of like this. Hopefully you guys get the idea. Okay. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a reduce function. If you're watching this video, I recommend that you guys are comfortable with using these built-in JavaScript methods. If you're not, please check out the earlier algorithm videos. You can find it in the links in the description below. I do some of the more, uh, it's called the intermediate JavaScript algorithm section. So those I will explain a little bit more in detail about our, the methods, the built-in methods that JavaScript has. I'm gonna assume that you guys know what a accumulator, what a reduce function does, okay? So let's do this. Const, our, uh, let's call the object one, we'll call it object one, that's the object version of the array one, and we'll do array one dot reduce, takes in the callback functions as first parameter, and the second parameter is uh, the initial value of our accumulator, which we will initialize as an empty object like so. The first parameter is always gonna be the accumulator within here, within the callback function. Now the second object is the element that we're looping over, right? But these elements are all arrays, or two an array with two elements. So why don't we just destructure that? We will put in an array here, and we will say this one is the amount, and the second one is the name. And let's just make an inline return function so that we don't have to write the return keyword. And we're gonna return an object where the first value, we're just gonna spread the accumulator, everything that was in the accumulator thus far. And the second, the one that we're adding to this accumulator is the key as the name. Now, because we wanna use a variable, we put a square bracket here. And the amount, the value will be the amount, like so. So I think that will work. Let's just copy this over here and make an object version of array two by doing just that. Now, I think everything is in order. Let me just console log object one and console log object two, just to make sure that we are on the right track for this example here. I run the code here and I, it seems like everything is correct. Although I don't know why they didn't put a, a quotation marks under the microphone, but I, I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there, but whatever, that's good enough for me, hopefully. Okay, so now what I want to do is this. Let us combine the two objects so that we just add up the numbers. So I'm gonna first declare um, combined object. And we could start off with the initial object, 
but I'm just gonna spread the value of that because I don't want to mutate it. Uh, hmm. Actually, we can mutate it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So let's just mutate it. So let's do this. We're gonna increase our object one with these values within object two. So let's do this. Let's loop over the keys of object two. So let's do four. Let, mm -hmm, I will do a for in loop const name of object two. So this will loop over all the keys of object two. Uh, like in our case, hairpin, having apple, bowling ball, and toothpaste. That's what name is going to be. And we will do this. If the key name is in object one, we're going to add to it, right? So that means because it already exists in object one. So we will say object one at name will be added by object two of name. Either otherwise, that means that the key does not exist in object one. So we got to add it. So we'll say object one at name is going to equal object two at name by that amount. These are the amounts that we're adding. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me just console log the result of object one after here. So this is after adding and this is before. Object one like so. I run the code and I get an error. Why do I get an error? It's because I have this. Object two is not iterable. Ah, I made a dumb mistake. Uh, we, we don't want to do const name of, I think I said I'm going to do a for in loop, but I did a for of loop instead. So to loop over objects, we could do the for, for in loop like so. And now we don't get an error. So before it was just this. Now it seems like we have added everything correctly. So that is good. Now, what we have to do is we've got to return in this two dimensional array type form. So we got to convert our object one into back to a two dimensional array like form. So the way that I'm going to do that is uh, const output is equal to, I'm going to, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to make this as an empty array and then I'm going to do another for in loop for object one this time. Const name in object one. And this is what we're gonna do. Uh, notice everything is the amount first, an array that is the amount first, and then the name second, right? So we're gonna output push an array with the amount, which is object one at name, comma, and then the name itself, like so. Now, we can return the output. However, this is not complete. And let me show you guys why. Let's console log the result of this. I run the code. It seems correct, but check this out. Everything should be in alphabetical order. Hairpin and then microphone. So these two should be flipped, but it's not. So I'm gonna use the sorting, sorting method here. So I'm gonna do output.sort. It's another method of, of uh, a uh, an array in JavaScript. So what we the, the compare we pass in two parameters here, which is the two elements in sequential order, and we just sort them based upon a certain parameter that we give it. So I'm just gonna call this uh, let's see, R1 and then R2, because everything inside this output is an array inside this big array. And what we are going to do is we're gonna get R1 at index one. Uh, so what array one at index one will give us is the name of that element. Now I'm gonna use this built-in JavaScript method called locale compare. And I'm gonna compare that with R2 at index one, which is the name of our second element. What locale compare does is it tells us which one comes preceding or after, before, after in, in, the, in the alphabetical order. Uh, if you're not comfortable with the sorting method, please Google MDN uh, JavaScript array sort and learn about it there. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because, again, this is an advanced JavaScript section. So I don't want to spend too much explaining all of these methods. But this will work. Let's run the code again. And now it's, everything is in alphabetical order. So let's see if free code camp is satisfied with this solution. Let's just copy this code over here. And I'm gonna paste it here, run the test, and we pass. Okay, so let's just compare, let's just talk about the 
o to the n complexity of this function here. So we are re calling a reduce method here. Each of these reduce are o to the n, but they're not in inside each other. So we're still at o to the n. We have another for loop here, another o to the n, another o to the n here, and a sort, which is another o to the n. So these are all o to the n in a sequence, but not inside each other. So the total o to the n is this, it's just o to the n. So there might be a better way to do this. Maybe we didn't need to do the shortcut to this uh, convenient method of converting them to an object first. There's probably a way you could do this without doing this to make it a little bit more efficient. But you know, this is just such a 2D array, such a nasty thing to deal with like this. I would much prefer us to use objects instead. Okay, so guys, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Hopefully this solution makes sense. Uh, guys, if you like my content, please click like and subscribe below. You will see constantly, you will always find JavaScript uh, algorithms. I release them almost on a daily basis. I also release React tutorial videos, JavaScript tutorial videos, anything related to coding, you will find it here. So guys, please subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Happy coding.